Elias Espadas, Xander Zayas, Pedro Campa, Teofimo Lopez. You do not want to miss it. Coming to you live Saturday night from right here inside Resorts World. Enjoy your afternoon, everybody. Looking like a D3. Maybe he got it from Disney. That's the um, marquee fight of the weekend. Tiafimo Lopez in his return taking on a Pedro Campa. He's got very heavy feet. So if he gets knocked out, um, then it's probably going to be real ugly. That's going to be on a top rank on ESPN at 10 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to be here streaming during the main event. How are you guys doing? We got a lot of things to talk about today in the next uh, hour or so. What are you guys up to? How do you feel about this summer? I guess you can say... Normally, for those who don't know here in the States and, you know, we're blessed to have an international audience here who watches our videos. But for those who don't know, for me, put it this way, for me, the summer is over. September the 1st. Even though what fall is not until about September 21st, for me, summer is over September the 1st. So when I look at this summer schedule. I just be like, you know, for hardcores, we've been able to find some hidden gems. You know what fight was really disappointing? Ray Vargas versus Mark Maxeo. You know, Danny Garcia versus Jose Benavidez. That, that was disappointing. But this summer's been, you know, but the good thing is, is revving up. You know how certain shows have like season premieres. I look at Danny Garcia versus Jose Benavidez as like the season premiere of boxing season. And it's just like the first few episodes just been like boring as fuck. And you're just like, okay, like when is this show going to pick up? You know, like I heard this shit is good, but when is it going to pick up? So, you know, what have that would have been our last uh, few weeks of marquee fights? You had Danny Garcia versus Jose Benavidez. 
You had the return of Virgil Ortiz versus Michael McKinson, punched him right in the stomach. Blair Cobbs beat up. Well, he didn't beat up, but he got a win over um over uh, Maurice Hooker. And now you have the return of Tiafimo Lopez against your Pedro Compa. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But next week. Now next week, get my nips hard. Excuse my language. This is a uh show for mature audiences. Next week kind of brings a smile to my face. We got Adrian Broner taking on um Omar Figueroa. Ooh. Ooh. Is that not like seductive? Because if Adrian Broner wins, it's going to be like, my God, he finally let his hands go. He finally let his hands go because a lot of people feel he's going to lose to Omar Figueroa because Omar Figueroa is just going to out punch him. And then you have Alexander Usyk versus Anthony Joshua, which we're going to talk about later on in the video. I got a bone to pick. You know, within September, Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall, Elisa Baumgartner versus Michaela Mayer. That I want to see Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall more. By the way, we got some footage um, of Clarissa Shields. I got to upload. We got um, footage from uh, Susie Q. Ramadan interview. Big J did. I got to upload. But. I'm more interested in seeing Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall than Canelo versus Golovkin 3. That's just me. That's just me. You know, and I'm a degenerate like that. But no, that's that's some that's some 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 boxing seduction right there. That's high erotica. But overall, nothing's really like really, really sticking out. You know? Now, I guess the first topic we should talk about is. Tia Fimo. I think we got to talk about it because people have been talking. You know, there used to be this saying if you used to watch wrestling back in the um, mid to late 90s, like the early 2000s, where like if the NWO, you know, Scott Hall, Hollywood Hogan, Big Sexy Kevin Nash, if they would have come to you and be like, you know something, brother, we've been having some talks about you in the back. We don't like the way you've been moving. You see what I'm saying? There's been some talks about Tia Fimo floating around. Like people be like, yo, what is up with him? Has he been a little different over the last like year or so? Like, are you getting kind of like some vibes? Like, you know, I'm not one to judge. I'm a quirky ass dude and I can be a bit abrasive and I'll cuss somebody out in a heartbeat. But he been, it just seemed like something different about him. Is it just me? You, that, not any, not any actual person, stinky. I'm talking about, you know, like, like social media. Like people been looking like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, what be up with Tia? What's going on with him? You know, why are you doing these like interviews? Why are you acting all like a weirdo? I'm not saying that. I'm just the voice of the people. You see what I'm saying? I'm just I'm I'm just the voice of the people, but I've been noticing like watching his interviews and everything, and I be thinking like, yo, like, you know, something wrong, you know? I'm hoping he getting the help that he need. Now, if you remember, let me see if I can pull that up. I'm going to see if I can pull up the post fight uh um interview from Tia Fimo and um George Cambosos. That's what I'm talking about, D3. Like, you know, seem like some shit going on. And, you know, I'm all for therapy. T-Street's in therapy. You know, like T-Street doing real, real good in life. You see what I'm saying? You know, I, I told you guys um, last month I, I took a lot of heat because I predicted that uh, Javier Fortuna was going to beat Ryan Garcia because of voodoo. Um, I dabbled in voodoo years ago, and it just, it just, it just messed me up real bad. I left it alone. But... I guess what I'm saying is, you know, like I'm hoping dude getting, hold on, let me see, Lopez, Cambosos, Post, fine. I'm hoping brother getting the help that he need because he just seemed a little fucked up, you know? Here, let's go back and listen to the uh, post fight interview. Now he did say, and there was rumors leading into the fight that he was having some issues with his wife. You know, that was already in the public forum. 
then, you know, and I know all too well, you know, about how it can affect you if you're a real father when you don't see your kid. So he was talking about he wasn't able to see his kid and all that. I'm like, whoa, bro. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Listen, anybody, if you need family court advice, like I'm your guy. If you need family law, child custody and all that shit, I'm your guy. But that's the first thing I thought about. Like, wait a minute. I hope nobody. I'm just saying. I'm just speculate. That that's my right. My bad, James. <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen, there's going to be some videos. Y'all going to be like, yo, this guy's the fucking man. He know what he's talking about. And there's going to be other videos you may tune in. I may be on a rant. I may be, you know, talking about voodoo. You know, I may be talking about like how I'm predicting that Chavez Jr. can beat um, um, Canelo because he's going to pay for the sins of his father and all kind of shit. So, but at the end of the day, we talk boxing. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, I just was thinking to myself, like, man, I'm hoping dude is all right, you know? You know, because I, you know, I let, let's listen to the post-fight interview. Let's go back down memory lane. So for those who are just tuning in, we're talking about the uh, Tiafima Lopez card, which is, um, in fact, let's go watch the face-off again for those who want to see it. In fact, let's listen. Listen to, just listen. To, if you didn't see it, this was from 4 p.m. This was about, mm, Two and a half hours ago. And he only talked, he didn't speak for that long, no more than five minutes or so. But this is from the um, uh, final press conference. Here, let's start right here. So, yeah, take your time out. Like the video, subscribe. Um, we are here Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern. Those times are subject to change. But, you know, as boxing is revving up, put it this way. If it's a fight like last week with Virgil Ortiz versus Michael McKinson, listen, I've been covering motherfucking boxing on YouTube for 10 years, man. You know, like certain fights like that, it's like I'm not going to put my all into it anymore. You dig? But a week like this, you know, I'm like, all right, I ain't doing shit else. You know, just did some food prep. So, all right, you know what? We're going to do the full fight week coverage. But anyway, let's go. Um, listen, this was from the press conference not even two hours ago for uh, Tiafima Lopez versus Pedro Campa, which is going to be on top rank on ESPN. The card's going to be starting at 6.40 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Then at 10 p.m. Eastern on regular ESPN, it's going to open up with Xander Zayas versus, Lord, I forgot who the guy's fighting, um, Elias. It's down below in the description box. What I do do for you, here, let me show y'all this. Y'all gonna watch this shit. You see this? This is the description box. When I tell y'all to go down there, you see how it has my link tree? This has all of my social media. You can click that to follow me on Twitter, you know. No, you're gonna listen to this before we start. You know, here's the website, fightview360.com. It has all of our rankings. Mikey updates those rankings monthly in accordance to the sanctioning bodies. And he told me something about, you know, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is everything you need is down here. Look, I even put the significant fights of the boxing schedule. No, we're going to go full screen on your ass. You see this? You see how I put, you know, upcoming fights and I put the, the Showtime PBC significant fight schedule all the way to Wilder versus Hellenius top ranked fights in Sky Sports. You see how I put these cards? I do this for you, the people. And then look, I type all of this shit. And then look, I even do past post fight, I mean, past fight results. So you go down there, you see this, this is a disgrace. Y'all need to like the video. This is disgraceful. Y'all think I'm doing this for my health? That's the least you can do is like the video or subscribe or don't do it. This is your right. Anyway, let's go uh, back to memory lane. This is from the uh, press conference earlier. How special is it to you to be a uh, part of the team? But yeah, basically, I'm just saying, like, the T.O. just seem a little bit off. You know, I'm wondering if he's one of those guys. I'm wondering if he's one of those guys where, um, like, the loss really affected him. Top-ranked family and have these weekends and being able to experience this, uh, this incredible uh, weekend of fighting. Man, it's amazing. It's a blessing to me. Um, 19 years old. Never. My bad to keep interrupting. I got my eye on him. I've covered the uh, Xander Zayas fight before. And I've said this before. You know, you can spell his name two different ways. His name is spelled, damn it, I always forget. It starts with, it's a, you can spell his name 
right? Hold on, let me make sure because I always mess it up. Okay, it's spelled. Where's it at? So his name is spelled X A N D E R Xander Zayas Z A Y A S. But you can swap the X and the Z, and it still be the same shit. So you can spell it Z A D Z A N D E R X A Y A S. You know how I know? Because I'm always typing that shit and it be fucking me up, and I always forget. But anyway, I just thought that you know. Let me let me let me let me stay on topic. Thanks for watching. Never imagined this ever in my life. 19 in the press. But I was saying that I got my eye on him. I'm going to be I'm going to be covering him. You know, um, he's creeping up on the ranking. Now, right now, he's weighing in very close to the 154 pound division, but he started his career at 147. But you know how it goes with those um, prospect fringe contenders. They'll they won't be weighing in at their weight. So I'm wondering, I think he's going to be a 147 pounder. Conference, my third fight as a co-main event in a great card. Um, Teofimo's Lopez comeback. I mean, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be here. I'm happy and I'm hungry to put on a show Saturday night. And I'm going to show the world what I'm the best prospect in boxing right now. I love it. And you just mentioned uh, the comeback. No bullshit. His name be fucking me up. Thank you for joining us. It is our main event Saturday night. Tio, I want to talk with you right out of the gate. It's been almost two years since you fought on ESPN. How special is it for you to be back at this brand new resort headlining ESPN? Well, first and foremost, I want to thank God. I want to thank him for all of us being here today. First and foremost on that part. I mean, at the end of it all, I don't know. It's too much energy. I feel like that's what it is. <laughs> Anywho, like I said. Somebody in the chat earlier said they only did that because they ain't trying to hear all the excuses and the bullshit. Yeah, hey, man. Um, nah, it feels good. It was really me that said that. Great. You know, it's great to be back here, back at home, ESPN, on the platform, the greatest platform in the world, really. And uh, alongside with Top Rank, you know, for everybody being here, man, it's Vegas for the weekend. So, hey, let's just have a great time. Let's put on a show for everybody. And uh, I can't wait to show everyone why Teofimo is the greatest of all time. You mentioned Vegas weekend. Are there distractions when you come to Las Vegas, or is it pretty easy for you to follow camp and go right through fight week? Nah, a true champion never gets distracted. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of it all, man, this ain't my first rodeo. You know, 21 years in the game, blood, sweat, and tears. You know, so do your research. See it. Five-time world champion. We just here to go and dominate and do what we always do: entertain. Pedro Campa, uh, this fight has been billed as. Watched a little bit of tape on Pedro Campa. He's got very heavy feet, so to me, you know, that makes me think that if he gets knocked out, it's going to be ugly, like body twisting ugly. But as I was saying before, we listened to the rest of uh, Tio. It wasn't that long. You know, he just don't seem, you know, like like here, if that makes sense. You know, like, I don't know, man. I'm hoping, you know, that, you know, because remember, he was having issues with his pop. He was having issues with his wife. You know, and then he was going a, a period of time without seeing his kid. But he did talk about it. And I'm getting off track. Let me go. Let's, let's go listen to this uh, post fight. The zone interview, not from George, but from Tio and what he had to say after the fight, which was pretty delusional. Here we go, back down memory lane. And then George Cambosos just looked like shit against uh, Devin Haney. I am not looking forward to that rematch, but uh, Big J's going. So, you know, I mean, you know, that's a plus. Listen, you heard you champ. Forget the rest. Hey, yo, yo, yo. You got, hey, hell of a fighter, but I won tonight, man. Everybody know that. The referee raised my hand. I won tonight. I don't care what anybody says, yo. I won tonight. Hey, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I've been here. I've done that. I want to thank God. I want to thank everybody that came out tonight. Look, I ain't no sore loser. I take my wins like I take my losses. At the end of the day, man, I'm a true champion. I came out here. I did what I had to do. And I went out there and I did my best. Yo, I don't care what anybody says, man. I am as real as they come. And watch, this is the takeover, man. We don't stop, we keep coming. Yo, at the end of the day, man, I love you all. I won this fight. Teofimo, you, you believe coming in 
that no. you were going to be able to end this fight early. You get knocked down in the first round. What was your mindset going back to the corner? It's good. Good shot. All right. Time to wake up. Time to do the thing what I got to do. After that, man, it was a, it is what it is. It's boxing. But you know what, man? I know what it is. I know how these people work. Referee knew I won tonight. Everybody won, knew I won tonight. And I'm just thankful. Did you believe this was a close fight going into those last two rounds? No, I don't. I don't believe it was a close fight at all. I believe that at the end of it all, I score it. I score it 11-2. Well, 11, 10-2. Uh, you believed you won 10 of the 12 rounds. Yes, I did. George, listen, you got to move up, bro, because <laughs> you're a bit delusional, brother. All right. Listen, I got the belts. I won the fight. I won the clean and clear. Look at your face. But you know what? I give you respect. I came here. I gave you the, the respect in the ring, and I won the fight. I got the belts. Take a look at champ. Move on. We do it again in Australia. 80,000 people. Me and you, brother. What a war we'll have in Australia. Let's do it again. Teofimo just doing it again in Australia. Appeal to you. Right now, I'm gonna go back to my go back to the drawing board. I'm gonna spend time with my son. I haven't spent time with my boy in a long time. I mean, he was just born 11 days ago, and that's really what matters to me. Family, man. Hey, to everybody, I apologize in advance, man. To all those, I wanted to be the inspiration for all of them, for the new generation, and I still am, man. Everything happens for its reasons. I believe in God, man. I have faith in him. I, I ain't scared about this, and I ain't sad about this. Tefima, you have nothing to apologize for. That was a tremendous fight, one way or the other. As I was saying, I just hope that, you know, ain't shit wrong because he been looking a little and sounding a little fucked up in media, you know. Stay focused on the gentleman to my left. None of it is possible unless we finish the job. You know what I mean? This guy is in front of me to stop my dreams and stop everything that we we're shooting for. You know what I'm saying? Um, every time I go out there in the ring, you know, I'm risking everything. I'm risking my life. We double down every time. You know, when it comes to me, it's just me versus me. No one else. And uh, I thank God for that. He's always in my corner. And I look forward to uh, just shutting a lot of mouths up, open their mouths up too, so that way we could just uh, just keep going and uh, letting them know the takeover. It's not the don't call it a comeback now. It's a takeover, takeover. It's the takeover, takeover. It's uh, almost nine months since your first and only defeat. What did you take <laughs> away from that experience? How has it made you not only a better fighter but a better person? And uh, what we're going to see Saturday night. I, I love how, how God works in mysterious ways, you know what I'm saying? I've accomplished so much within my five years in the pro game, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's all from the grace of the Lord. So I just look at it like this, man. Uh, my first loss, yeah, cool. This ain't my first loss. This is actually my 21st loss. And we count the amateurs as well, you know? So I always bounce back. I'm always that type of person, you know what I'm saying? The first step to success is failure. And tonight, I mean, Saturday night, Definitely a lot of people are going to tune in on that, man. Um, I just want to be someone that's going to inspire others, inspire the new generation that's on the rise, and uh, just perform at my best. La Roca. See, I guess what I'm saying is he just doesn't sound like as confident as he used to sound. Like, really. You know, and looking at the 140-pound division, all right? Let's just talk about it a little bit. Um... You have Josh Taylor, who currently is holding, well, actually no more, um, but he's no longer the WBC champion. He's no longer the WBA champion. Damn, dog. Um, the IBF is now looking like he was ordered to fight Jeremias uh, Ponce or Ponce. He's an Argentine fighter. But I expect for Josh Taylor, this was today, I expect for Josh Taylor to vacate. So therefore, the WBC, the WBA, and the IBF are currently free. And he only has the WBO. Now, right now, Tiafimo, for some reason, I feel like Tiafimo is going to fight Arnold Barboza next if he beats this Pedro Campa. Here's Pedro Campa, by the way. Campo. No, it's Pedro Campa. Yeah, I'm tripping. I knew I had it right. Hold on, let me hold on. But this is the type of dude. Remember how people felt about um some people felt about Navarrete and Dog Bay the first time they fought when Navarrete was like that fish out of water kind of over here with that big ass coat on. If you don't remember the press conference. I wonder if this dude can come over here and beat Tiafimo. I mean, after all, Tiafimo lost to George Cambosos. And, and then he even got dropped by George Cambosos. And look how George Cambosos just got dominated by Devin Haney. 
That is true. Compass feet is very slow. Let's go look at a little bit of tape for you, the people. Let's see if we can find you some tape. Where's the tape? Let's watch some tape. See what's going on. Here we go. We ain't gonna listen to the music though. But here go your boy. Who picking Compa? Y'all got Compa for the win? He just got very, he very, see how he had them feet heavy? So if he get knocked out, his body gonna be probably twisting all around and shit. It's gonna be ugly. And you know what? I think I sold his car too. Man, I miss boxing Azteca. Remember that shit? What happened to that? He lost their money. See, you know, he's just like, he's the type of guy that it looks like if he gets you hurt, then you're in some real trouble because all these heavy, hard looping shots. But dude, feet ain't moving. They just stuck. Look, them feet ain't moving. So therefore, he's going to be there to be hit big time. It's going to be ugly. Yeah, I did. I did notice that from what um, from what Arnold Barboza has been saying is that he's been trying to get the Tiafimo fight, but it's looking like top ring's going to force it. Remember how a lot of people, including myself, was saying that with the way Tiafimo was treating top rank when he got that purse bid from Triller that it was going to make him pay. You know, he can't just go back with the same like clout. He was kind of disrespectful for a promotional company and what she had signed to deal with. So I don't think they're going to cut him no breaks. Like he get in this fight with Pedro Compa and then I think it's going to be him versus Ornor Barboza unless he tries to fast track to a title. And remember, you got three titles that are free. Well, actually, no, let me explain it. Alberto Pulio and Bakhtir Akhmedov, they're going to be fighting for the WBA title on the undercard of Adrian Broner and um and uh, omar figueroa next week so that's the wba you've had jose cepeda right be ordered to fight regis pro gray for the vacant wbc right uh, for whatever reason jose ramirez is not he dropped out of it and now since the w the ibf has ordered josh taylor to fight jeremiah's point say josh taylor can't travel the rumors are he can't travel from the mtk uh fighter but will he vacate? Will they be able to get points A to come to? You know, well, actually, Josh Taylor is supposed to be fighting um, Jack Catterall again. But let's say he vacates, right? Then you're going to have points A versus Sabriel Matias. They've been talking about like that's been circulating around in boxing circles. So realistically, Tiafimo, depending on what's going to happen with Liam Paro. And Brock Jarvis, Liam Perro, whoever fights for that WBO title or gets the next mandatory at Josh Taylor, Jack Catterall, two winner, is going to have to face Liam Perro. So I so if we see Tia Fimo versus Arnold Barboza, I don't think that's going to be a final eliminator unless we got unless we get Tia Fimo versus Liam. Perro. It's too early to say it's too it's too early to say. But right now, I'm thinking if my gut is telling me that we're either going to see Tia Fimo versus Orner Barboza, or we could possibly possibly see Tia Fimo versus Jose Ramirez. I don't think Tia is going to have an easy road at 140 pounds. At all. On the undercard, you're going to have Xander Zayas. This is what I was talking about earlier on how um, he's been fighting at 154. He's creeping up on, on a ranking soon. But he wants to compete at 147 pounds. He's fighting this dude. I looked, I did a little bit of looking around at him, but never really heard of him. I can't look at no fights to think that I ever saw. He fought Demetrius Ballard. No decision, no contest. Yamaguchi Falco, but I haven't, I don't know, I haven't seen this dude. But for what I've been researching, people are saying he's kind of a test. But basically, this is one of those tests. It's a filler card. He's getting married that week. Okay, gotcha, Dana Jones. That's what's up. All right, that makes sense. All right, so Dana, if it's true, but that sounds like something somebody wouldn't lie about, is that Jose Ramirez and Jose Zapata are not fighting because he's... Uh, 
Wait, because Ramirez is getting married. All right, okay, all right, cool. 